Hello everyone and welcome back in another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you some theoretical information about computer and information technology or which is information and communication technology. First, we'll start with ICT or what's the ICT or the component of ICT. ICT or uh, information and communication technology, they're just like a broad concept or a broad term or like a general term or contain everything about technology. I mean the wireless, the cloud computing, the mobile technology, computer, servers, internet, intranet, networks, and everything. This is like a broad concept, like a very general concept. So the system in general is contain or consist from or uh, there is a three or a three parts of the any system, uh, which is input, process, and output. So input anything will insert to the to the system, uh, and the process means the, the the operations and the process that system will apply to this input to change the data to to change this input to process or addressing this input. After that, the output is like a result of the system. So for example, here this is a simple system. We have a camera, the camera will take a picture to someone. This is just an input to the computer. In the computer, we can using, for example, an uh, Photoshop to process this image, to, to change this image, or do, do some, uh, uh, some uh, operation to this image, and then just output as, or print the image using the printer. It is, it is just like a simple system. Uh, also, we have we can consider like a camera, digital camera is a system, and also the computer is a system, and the printer itself is a system. So uh, the output of the system, which is a camera system, will be the input with the to the computer, and so on. The output of the computer will be the input for the printer system. So we can the the systems can interact between each other. Or we can just con, uh, consider this and as uh, just one system, and we have input and the process and output. Same thing with the computer. Computer also is a system, so we can say computers take a data as input, take a data from input devices. I will tell you what's the input devices, and then store data or instructions in the memory and uses them as required. After that, process data and convert it into useful information and generate the output and control all those operations. So the, the, the computer as a system would be like this. We have input in the right uh, left side. We have input and here the process and inside the case of computer we can see many parts for process and then we have an output. So the input devices in the computer which is any input device like keyboard, mouse or other input device like a webcam or something like this input device to insert data to the computer I mean keyboard to insert something to insert an instruction by the keyboard or by the mouse or by the camera to and something like this and the, inside the computer a process like in, we have many parts in computer like a CPU like hard drive RAM room and so on and then after make a process to the data or apply some process to the data just result as an uh, output or the output will be the result in the, the output device like monitor for example like a printer like a speaker or something like that. we have also uh, some general information which is hardware and software what I mean by hardware and software hardware is any like a physical device any physical we can touch it it's like a tangible things like uh, the desktop keyboard anything any physical parts in the computer, even out the computer, outside the computer, or inside the computer, like word, like uh, sorry, mouse, like keyboard, like RAM, CPU, case, monitor, everything we can touch it is called hardware. Software, anything you cannot touch, it is like uh, like uh, Windows, or like Word, or any software or any application inside the computer, of course. So we'll start with hardware. Hardware refer to the physical component that tangible like monitor, printer, and camera, and so on. And uh, we have a type of hardware or hard type of computers like we have a com personal computer, uh, uh, personal computer like this. We have just a personal computer. Uh, two types of personal computer. First one is IBM compatible computer. That mean which means just a normal computer, a normal desk, normal desktop with Windows operating system. 
and we have an Apple computer it's called for example Macintosh we have Macintosh and contain it's like a Macintosh or for from Apple contain or uses a different operating system like uh, a Macintosh or Mac operating system like also in the mobile we have Android and we have Apple use iOS operating system and of course we have laptop it's a small portable using batteries with the or along with the main power and so on it is smaller than desktop and uh, we have now a main parts of computer what's the main parts of computer the first thing we have a CPU it's responsible for uh, process data information instruction in the computer so most important part in computers perform all calculations and determine how fast uh, your computer CPU speed measured by megahertz or gigahertz CPU part we have three parts or four parts or maybe just the main three parts in the CPU CPU stands for uh, central processing unit central processing unit so, so the first part is CU or um, control unit which is responsible for controlling the sequences and timing in the computer responsible for 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 uh, control the time in the computer and also sequences to like a priority of uh, of uh, of process in the CPU also we have ALU which stands for arithmetic and logic unit from this name arithmetic and logic unit which perform uh, performs arithmetic and logic operation like addition, um, multiplication, division and so on registers like a, a small storage small storage inside the CPU to store data using by ALU uh, I mean arithmetic and logic unit and the program instructions, some pro program instructors also we have a buses are like a collection of wires to transmit the data from one part of computer to another uh, we have also primary memory, we say the main parts of computer, we have a CPU and we have a primary memory or called main memory. The main memory we have the first thing we have RAM or random access memory. Random access memory called, is called volatile memory which means uh, the instructions or software will store it inside this memory inside random access memory or RAM just temporarily not permanently. I mean uh, which means uh, when you turn off the computer, when the when the electricity cut off from the computer, there is no electricity or turn off the computer, all data or information or instructions or software inside random access memory will be removed from random access memory. Just the data stored temporarily inside random access memory. So you can see, for example, if you open the word in your computer, if you're opening the word in your computer and then restart your computer, you will see the word will cancelled or closed for, closed because uh, it was inside random access memory and you, when you turn off the computer, deleted or removed from random access memory and you can just double click on it to open it again or to run it again and it will be again inside random access memory and we have room or read only memory read only memory is uh, store data or store information permanently but you cannot from this name read only memory you cannot change the data you cannot write on this memory you cannot add a new software in this memory it just contains some contains some software that's created by the programmers i mean for example lenovo and the company which manufactured this pro this product lenovo there is a programmer here who created this software inside random uh, inside read only memory also we have a bios or basic input output system bios is a type of uh, of random of read only memory also contain an uh, also contains a software called loader to load the operating system secondary memory like a type of memory is also known as external memory or non volatile memory Non-volatile memory like uh, op that's, that's like opposite of re random access memory. That means the data will be in s uh, the, the data always stored in this memory permanently, like a flash memory, like hard drive, like CD, like DVD. So the the CPU cannot directly access this memory, uh, which means, uh, for example, in the hard drive, as an external memory. Uh, 
CPU cannot directly working or interact with the hard drive. We need to send the data to the main memory, which is random access memory, and then the CPU can interact with random access memory, which is the main memory. Input device allow user to insert data like keyboard and so on. Output device that translate the information that are processed by computer to the form that a human can understand, just like this. Input when you set the data by keyboard or insert data by keyboard, this data will convert to the machine language so computer can understand this data, like zero and one. After that, the output is opposite of input. Will translate this data to the way that a human can understand, like in the word in the screen, so you can see the 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 images, the letters, numbers, and so on. So human can understand that. Input output ports like this here. We have a serial port, VGA port, and some different ports, and maybe network port to connect with the internet and so on. And we have universal serial bus or USB port. It's very important. Why? Because this connect all kinds of external device or many kinds of external device. I mean, it can connect hard disk, printer, scanner, anything contain USB. So USB is not like other ports. And software set of instructions, data or programs. So software, of course, there is a programmers or software engineers create this software. Software like Word, like operating system, like PowerPoint, Photoshop, and so on. Operating system is a type of software, but we can say it is a special type of software or the master of software. Why? Because operating system is work or act as an a bridge or a connector as a bridge between hardware and software and also a bridge between human and computer because as a normal user you cannot working or interact with computer directly without operating system so in order to interact with computer as a normal user or to working or using the computer as a normal user you need to use the operating system as interface and then the operating system will work with the computer and also as I said this connect between hardware and software so here you can see we have a user normal user and this application this application will be inside the operating system and the operating system will work with the hardware in the computer I mean CPU RAM and so on so we'll send the data from hardware to the RAM and this operation will the, 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 it's responsible for operating system there's two types of operating system which is GUI and CLI GUI stands for graf graphical user interface and CLI stands for uh, command line interface. I explained that to you. Uh, uh, GUI that mean like Windows. For example, you can see we have icons, we have desktop, we have folders, file. You can using the mouse and just double click to open something to create a new folder. Just right click and create a new folder and so on. In the CLI, you cannot see any graphics, just any icons or something like that. Just a command, just a black screen like the screen in the left. Uh, the screen I mean. So in order to create a new folder, for example, you have to write some command to create a new folder. I'll show you that just uh, quickly how to work with this. So for example, in Windows, this GUI, Graphical User Interface, I can just right click and create a new folder. Now I create a new folder. I can name this folder Osama, for example, and enter. Now I just create a new folder. But in the CMD or in the CLI, uh, Command Line Interface, here we have CMD in Windows command line so I can just open the command line in Windows so in order to create a new folder for example in the C or anywhere you can go for example in the edge or anywhere for example on the edge and try to create a folder I will just say mkdir that mean make that means make directory or create a new folder and name it Osama for example and that is he said this already exists already exists so I can create a new one make there for example uh, CLI so I created now I can access the CLI insert in, uh, inside this so CD change directory to the CLI I can now I am in the CLI in the CLI I can create a new directory MKDIR some for example now I create a new one so I can go now in the edge and the CLI in the edge you can find the CLI and inside CLI there is Osama folder so now if I go to edge from here I mean drive edge and I can see we have CLI I created now inside it I create Osama so this is the difference between 
CLI and GL uh, and GUI. Uh, when we turn on the computer, the operating system initially inside the hard drive because when we format the computer or install a new operating system in the computer, Windows or any operating system, it will be inside hard drive. So HDD or anything. So inside hard drive. So when we turn off the turn on the computer, we need to transfer or load the operating system from hard drive to the random access memory because anything working, anything running inside the computer should be inside random access memory. Why? Because as I said before, a CPU or central processing unit is like a brain of computer, right? So everything, uh, CPU responsible to process everything inside the computer, all instructions. And CPU cannot directly working with secondary memory like hard drive or CD or flash. So the the, the, so, the software or application or operating system or anything should be loaded to the random access memory firstly and then CPU or central processing unit can connect with this and process this data or information or instructions. So the operating system inside hard drive. So we need a software to load the operating system or to get the operating system from hard drive and put it inside random access memory so here we have not ram but room read only memory there is something called bios as i explained that before minutes bios which is a basic input output system bios is a type of room read only memory bios contain a software called a loader this software responsible to load operating system from hard drive and add it or transfer operating system from hard drive to the random access memory. So the room will get the operating system from hard drive and put it inside the random access memory. Now you can see your computer is working because anything running in the computer should be in the random access memory. So the first thing operating system will run and you can see the desktop that means operating that means operating system opening or running now on your computer after that the operating system will be the la, like a master of program or master software as i said because too responsible to do anything for example we need to open word now so just a word also inside hard drive but when we click double click on the word and open word now the operating system not a bios the operating system is responsible to get the word from hard drive and put it inside the random access memory now word is running inside random access memory and when we turn off the computer everything all data all software will removed or will delete from random access memory and then we need to boot again the the, the 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 process to get the operating system or load the operating system from hard drive to the random access memory called booting or boot we have open source there's closed source software a closed source software we can say commercial software open source software that mean what what i mean by open source software open source software that mean uh, we say the software there's a programmers created the software right so the programmers should write a code something called code using a programming language like java like many c++ c or many programming language python to create a software so open source that means this code, the code, the source code of the of the software open. So anybody can see this code, anybody can view or review this code, anybody can update this code or create a new version of the, of this software. So it's called open source. Like for example, GTA is a game. So you can see GTA um, in Mosul, in Arbil, in Iraq, in United States, and somewhere, anywhere, because it's open source program, so anyone, any company can create a new version to, and edit the software, edit this game, because the source code is open, anyone can access the source code. Also, we have, for example, the operating system, we have Linux, so we can find many distributions, a lot of distributions of Linux, like Kali Linux, Bugtrack, uh, Ubuntu, Red Hat and so on because any company any software company or any programmers can see the soft the uh, can access the source code of operating system and change it and create a new distribution but for example closed source or commercial program like for example Windows so you can see nobody can create a new version of Windows except Microsoft company because the source is closed 
source code is closed so nobody can access the source code and edit or create a new edited or create a new version of it so open source program always free for free but the closed source program you need to pay to buy or purchase this software here we have some uh, Example closed source program like uh, Photoshop, uh, like Office, like Windows, iOS, and so on. And open source program like Android, for example, like Linux and uh, Firefox, and so on. And we have uh, networking. Networking is uh, like a connection, the system which multiple computers are connected to each other, share information and resource. I mean, for example, we have just one um, printer. And you can connect this printer with the computer and those computers are connected with each other so anyone in this network can access this or can share this resource which is the um, printer or you can add a greater folder add the software inside one computer and all compu computers can access this computer and access the software or a folder so the characteristics of computer network share resource from one computer to another share the images the folders the videos or anything get file and store them in the computer access those files from other computers connected over the network that means you can get some files in the just one computer and all computers can access these files connect the printer scanner so just as i said connect one one printer and one scanner in the lab for example and all computers all employees in the lab or can access this this printer and using this printer and the scanner. So that's almost everything about uh, the basics or just the basics information about computer. Uh, in the next lecture, I'll show you how to uh, I'll show you how to work practically with Windows 10, how to work with Windows or uh, the operating system practically. So I hope you understand that and thank you.